Okay, welcome back. So we're going to look at some examples of actually creating some frequency tables from from scratch. All right, so say I've, I've got a sample of 20 students here and their blood types. All right, and we want to just summarize this data with a frequency table or frequency distribution. Now notice here I said frequency distribution. Right, and that's that's because lots of times we don't just want just the frequency or just the relative frequency, right? We may want all of that information in one place. So so we might call that a frequency distribution. All right, so this is categorical data, and you could put this into some sort of spreadsheet software and create a table yourself, right? Count stuff yourself. But I'm gonna show you how to do this in mini tab. Right, so we're going to get a first look at our software here. So I put my data over here in Minitab. And uh, Minitab is a super simple point and click type interface. It can handle all the types of data that we want to work with. So since I have categorical data here, okay, if we just go here to Stat, Tables, Tally Individual Variables, all I got to do to get a variable into this box in Minitab, locate your variable and double click it. And it'll put it in this box. Okay, so we have options on what we want it to give us. We just counts our frequencies, relative frequencies. Now, I may also be interested in these cumulative counts or cumulative percentages. Okay, so cumulative we know means just to add as you go. Right, so we'll see what that looks like in a table coming up. Alright, so I've got all these options. Now you can have Minitab store it into your, your spreadsheet area if you want. So I'll, I'll click that just so we can see what this looks like. Alright, so let's see what results we get. So up here, it's going to group all these different categories here, blood types. It's going to give us our frequency, our relative frequency, our cumulative count, so what's it doing here? We started with one, two, three, it's adding this as we go. Right? Three plus two is five, and so forth. Cumulative relative frequency does the same. So your cumulative frequency should add up to your total, that's 20. Your cumulative relative frequency should always add up to 100. All right, so pretty basic output there. Um, again, notice you can put it It'll store it in the spreadsheet for you here if you want that information. All right, so that is a categorical frequency distribution. So that's pretty easy. What if we have quantitative data? All right, things get a little more complicated with quantitative data. So here I have a data set of the highest temperature ever recorded in each of the 50 states. I want to do the same thing, create a frequency distribution. And here's, here's what the data looks like. All right, so unfortunately, Minitab doesn't have a great way of making a frequency table. It's, it's got really nice ways of graphing the, the data, stuff like that, but it doesn't have a great way of making a frequency table. So I want to kind of go into some basic data manipulation here and using Excel introduce you to kind of some of the functionalities here alright so I've got my states I've got the t highest temperature ever recorded in each of those states notice our states here in alphabetical order to start out with. so I can do this in Excel I can do this in Minitab now, of course, there's going to be 50 states, right? So the things I need to think about, right? What is what is n? So n is 50. Right? So there's 50 states, of course. So now I want to get an idea of what does my range look like? What's my maximum and what's my minimum? Okay, so we can do that easily in Excel. I can go here and I can say sort from, let's go smallest, to largest. Okay, so I'm seeing my minimum is 100, my maximum 
looks like 134. Okay, so if I want to find my range, I just take my max minus my minimum. All right, so another thing I'm thinking about is, well, how many how many groups should I do here? How many classes or bins? Well, n is 50, right? That's the square root of 50 is about seven. So maybe I would want to think about doing seven bins. Okay, so seven bins. I want it to cover my entire range, so there's 34. Well, 35 is divisible by 7. Okay, so what if I used 7 bins with a width of 5? Okay, so 7 bins with a width of 5. That would leave me with a coverage of 35. So that would cover my entire range. That would give me some nice neat numbers. I could start it at 100, so I could go 100 to 105, 105 to 110, and so forth. So I think that would probably work out pretty cleanly. Now let's just take a look at this data in Minitab real quick before we move forward. Uh, just to show kind of some of the basic functionalities here. It's already sorted, but you can sort in Minitab. Okay, if you go to data, sort, you can sort it from largest to just like in Excel. All right, but to just kind of get some basic uh, things like your max, your minimum, your range, all that, if you go to stat, basic statistics, display descriptives, double click my variable in here. So I'm going to click on this but statistics button. Here are all the default numbers that it gives you. So I'm going to say check statistics none, but right now we're just interested in basic things like our minimum, our maximum, our range, um, our in total. So let's just have it give all that and make sure that mini tab agrees with whatever we got in Excel. All right, 100 to 134, range of 34, count of 50. Okay, we're, we're in good shape there. Let's go back to it. Here was kind of my preliminary considerations. All right, so I'm going to make a frequency table net. I was going to do seven bins of size five, so 100, to 105. Right? And, and Excel, Excel is really smart because it'll start recognizing patterns. Okay, so I want my first class to start at 100, my second class to start at 105. I actually don't have to type all of those out. Okay, I can go here and just drag that down. All you got to do is put the first two, Excel will recognize the pattern, and, and so on. Alright, so this is my lower class limits, these are my upper class limits. Now I just got to figure out how many are in each one. Okay, so to find these frequencies, I'm going to use the count function in Excel. So if I type in equals count, I can highlight an area and it'll count how many observations are there. So this one is going to be anything greater than 100 but less than 105. Okay, so that's 100, 100, and 104. Now you could go through and count them on your own or you could use that count function. Again, count anything from 105 to 110, 105, right, but I'm not going to include 110 there, and so on. Okay, I've now found, went ahead and found the frequencies for the rest of the class. Now let's make sure that we did this right. So I'm going to use this sum function, sum all our frequencies up because we know we should have 50 states here. All right, it looks like we're in good shape. So let's calculate our relative frequency here. So we know our relative frequency is just our frequency divided by the total. So I could do this one of two ways. I could click in this box. I could say this one divided by this one. All right, gives me our relative frequency, 6%. So that's one way to do it. Or you could go in here and you could type the actual numbers. But remember the functionality in Excel that we like is we only have to do something once and then can just drag it down. So let's see what's going to happen. So I could take this, drag it down, uh oh, but I've got an error here. So what's happening? So when I drag it, right here this is saying F2 divided by F9. So when I drag it down, this is going to say F3 divided by F10. Oh, uh, it's dividing by a blank thing. So I need to tell Excel, well, we want to lock in that 50. 
Now there's a couple ways I could do it. I could just say 8 divided by just the number 50. All right, that's one way to do it. But you can also say, all right, I want to take 16, divide by this cell, but you can put dollar signs on either side of the letter there. Okay, so that tells Excel, when I drag, lock that cell in place. Okay, so now I should be able to drag it, and it will give me all of my relative frequencies here. So after doing all that in Excel, we knew the considerations we took, the decisions that we made here, the finished product might look something like this. All right, so you could do it in pretty much any software, Excel, whatever, wherever you want to do it. Okay, so our frequency tables are a good way for organizing data. We can do categorical or quantitative. So thanks for tuning in, and we'll see you next time.